Hello everyone and welcome to my 20th video on the C programming language on the Raspberry Pi. I think this is going to be the last video in this series. Uh, that doesn't mean I'm not I'm going to stop making videos on the Raspberry Pi and on C programming, uh, but what it does mean is that I, I think that uh, we have pretty much covered uh, the basics of C programming and a lot of the other things that we might cover in the future really build upon these things. If you followed along from the beginning uh, you already have a pretty good foundation of all the the basic things that you need to understand to be able to create uh, C, good C programs. And so in this video we are going to talk about something called uh, type def. And as the name might imply, what this does is it allows us to define our own data types. And uh, so it's, it's easier to explain this by showing you, so let's go ahead and get started with the code. Okay, in my last video I talked about the struct, and we're going to be using that same code with some modifications in this video. And just to review, uh, in that, in the struct tutorial we created two structs called one called position one called player and basically create create our own containers to hold the hold uh, data of different types in this video we're going to turn these into their own data types so that we don't have to uh, add this struct in front of it all the time uh, so it saves us a little bit of typing it also just makes the code a little bit easier to read because we don't we don't have we don't have this confusion of just having struct here. We can just call it it's a player and it, or it's a position and it makes it very uh, simple and straightforward. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at that and how how it's done. And before we do that, um, if you have already been playing with a lot of uh, C programming or other programming, you might be I might have seen something that looks like a, a something called a uint 16 or maybe a uint 8 or something like that. Uh, that's not actually a, a native uh, data type. Uh, that is uh, actually somewhere in a library. It is defined as a type def uh, of unsigned short type, um, and uh, and so that's what I've done here. Um, and uh, and I'll, just to show you that, this is how uh, uint 16. Uh, if you've ever used that before, is created, and uh, and down here, I can then just use uint16. I can give it a, a name. I'm here. I'm calling it example, and then on this line here, I'm just going to print the size of it to the screen. And size of returns the size of the argument in terms of number of bytes. So since this 16 means it's 16 bits. And so it should return a 2 here because 16 bits is 2 bytes. All right, uh, so let's, let's just go ahead and run that real quick just so you are, uh, you get to see what I'm talking about. So, so size of example is 2. And, uh, and so that's uh, there you have it. Now, for the structs, and we could also do, uh, we could even just create a type def int, for example, uh, and call it that. Let's just, let's just do that. So even though I'm calling this unit 16, um, this uh, we just changed the size of this data. I, you, know, you just saw it. all I did was change this right here. Uh, let's go ahead and build that, and uh, just I'm just experimenting here, and now you can see it's four bytes. Uh, so just by doing that, we changed the si size of that data type. Um, but let's, let's go ahead and change it back. Unsigned int. There we go. Uh, now here we have the structs, and if we if we flip back to the old code, uh, we we gave this struct a name up here, and then on this or for this one example, we uh, created a instance of that struct right here. Uh, I'm not doing that this time. Uh, instead, I've moved the names down here, and this will be the name of the data type uh, for this uh, for this struct data type, and it, and this this position is the same to this data type as un16 is to this data type as you'll see here in a minute and I did the same thing for player now since I did that down here I had to create Luke Skywalker on the line so I just used instead of using the struct keyword first I can use player directly and it makes the code just a little bit easier to understand because now I just I'm creating a player 
called Luke Skywalker, and that makes it real super simple, easy to read. And uh, and down here, uh, I'm actually showing you kind of the was now, uh, the old code uh, for Harry Potter. I, I typed out struct then player and Harry Potter. Now I just have to type player Harry Potter, and it does the exact same thing. Uh, and down here, uh, it, I. I did have, or I, my was, was struct position Hogwarts, and now I just have to uh, do the position Hogwarts, and it runs exactly the same. I think I showed you this already, but there you go. Uh, let's go ahead and run this one right here. Uh, build, just make sure it's all nice and current. Okay, create another one. There you go. There you go, those are exactly the same. Uh, and so the really the, the advantage of using the type def is we uh, we can create assign unique names to either structures or things like unsigned int. Uh, names that are descriptive to what we're using it for. For example, maybe we want to create a, a bit field, and, and we'll, we'll get into that in some of the advanced videos, but say we have a bit field that defines all the pins of a port, and there's 16 pins in the port. Well, we might use an unsigned int and call it port, and so then we can just use a data type called port to uh, to do that, or may, or I actually, if I guess if we were doing a bit field, it might be a type def struct and called port, and then we'd have 16 one-bit uh, fields to identify each pin in that port. Uh, so that that is really what the uh, how to use a type def and what it's good for, and you'll see that a lot when you get into um, uh, uh, bigger programs, and it just it just helps us add a layer of abstraction to the data. Uh, so that's about it. Uh, I hope you like this video. Um, please subscribe, share the video, leave comment. It helps out a lot. And uh, I am going to be creating some uh, more advanced videos uh, just to let you know what's coming up. Uh, we're going to be getting into doing Java on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, in fact, I already have some stuff going, and uh, I'm excited to introduce you to Java. It's one of my favorite uh, programming languages. And uh, with the Raspberry Pi 2, it allows us to develop directly on the Pi pretty easily, uh, and we'll be doing a little bit of that. I uh, also have some videos coming up on... Uh, on microprocessor interfaces like uh, serial peripheral interface, I2C, uh, some UART, and maybe some uh, some Ethernet uh, type communications, and maybe a, I think maybe a little bit of a, a controller area network. Uh, lots of lots of ideas, and uh, just trying to decide what to do first. So leave a comment and maybe uh, maybe uh, uh, leave your opinion of what, what you might like to see. Uh, coming up next. So that's it, and I'll talk again real soon.